Hello powerful galactic beings, welcome back to another video. You have gone through a tremendous spiritual awakening. Your life perspective has changed drastically over the past few months. And now, you are no longer the same person you once were a few years ago. But something has gone horribly wrong. While others on the spiritual path are reveling in their deep insights, you feel suffocated under the weight of an existential crisis. While others are busy reconnecting with their meaning of life, you can barely function in a job or even get out of bed to shower. While others feel a deeper sense of peace and alignment, you feel like you are on the verge of going crazy or being sucked into the black hole of depression forever. But what on earth has happened? Is it something you did wrong? Is it because you are not worthy? Is it because you are not strong enough? To begin with, what you are experiencing has nothing to do with your strengths or capabilities. What you are experiencing is something called a spiritual crisis. And as we will see throughout the rest of this video, it's a normal process that many people experience during their spiritual paths, and it's not your fault. The spiritual emergency is a severe crisis an individual may experience after going through a spiritual awakening. And so many of us has already gone through this phase in our spiritual path multiple times. Essentially, a spiritual crisis and emergency occurs when the spiritual awakening process speeds up so much that it becomes terrifying and destabilizing to the body and mind. Spiritual crisis or emergency is when personal transformation becomes a crisis. Since then, it has increased in popularity, although is still relatively unheard of within mainstream spiritual communities. Spiritual crisis or emergencies can happen to anyone at any point in life. Those who are not particularly spiritual, can experience it just as often as those who are actively engaged on the spiritual path. The common uniting factor is usually that a person undergoes a shock, in the form of illness, family death, major life change, and so on, which that triggers the spiritual crisis. What we are dealing with here is a force of nature, a divine movement of energy that cannot be tampered with without adverse effects, such as those stuck in the mental health system carousel. There is no six steps to happiness process here. I wish there was. I would so love to provide that for you. But that would be disingenuous and disrespectful to the process you are going through. Perhaps what is most important to take away from this video is that your suffering has a purpose and your experiences are spiritually valid. If there's anything you remember from this video, I hope it will be this. While there is no formula for healing, as every journey is different, there are some practices you can try which have helped those on a similar path before you. Please take these forms of advice very slowly, and stop at any time if you feel worse. Do not meditate at this point, practice mindfulness instead. Many people who undergo spiritual crisis or emergency simply cannot tolerate meditation. But why is it like this? Meditation can be very dissociating if you're not grounded strongly in your body. And those undergoing mystical psychosis or the dark night struggle to keep their grip on this plane of existence. Meditation can also open up doorways within the mind and encourage the influx of unconscious material. For a person already being bombarded with images and visions from the deep mind, this can be profoundly destabilizing. During this difficult time, it's better to practice mindfulness exercises. Mindfulness means consciously paying attention to the present moment. When we are mindful, we are fully engaged with our body and senses. Tuning into your sense of taste, touch, smell, sight, and hearing can help to bring you back down to earth in your body. Try to practice mindfulness a little bit every day. Wash the dishes mindfully and feel the cold water against your hands. Hang up the clothes mindfully and listen to the birds chirping outside. Eat mindfully and notice the different textures and flavors filling your mouth. You get the picture of what I mean. Seek out earth energy. Try to bring the energy of the earth into your daily life. As you may already know, the earth's energy is deeply grounding and nourishing. If you need help anchoring yourself into this realm, go outside and dig in the soil. Get your arms elbow deep in the dirt. Plant some seedlings in your backyard. Take care of a pot plants. Sit underneath a tree and feel the ground underneath your feet. If need be, bring a heavy stone to bed so you can literally become grounded. Echotherapy is a good avenue to explore. Temporarily stop your spiritual practice. 
To some, this may sound drastic, but the spiritual emergency isn't something to be trifled with. It's important to understand that some types of spiritual practice can intensify mystical psychosis and the dark night of the soul. In the interest of your sanity, it might be best to put your practice aside for a while and focus on mundane task. If you absolutely cannot do without some form of spiritual nourishment, try earth-centered approaches to spirituality, like spending time in nature. Ultimately, whether you follow this advice or not, is up to you and your situation. But definitely consider the possibility that your spiritual practice might be detrimental to your well-being right now. Eat hearty food. During the spiritual emergency, it's tempting to ignore what we eat, simply because we're too preoccupied or have no energy. But please, try your utmost to eat at least one hearty meal a day. When I say hearty, I mean the food needs to be grounded. Focus on root vegetables like sweet potatoes and beetroots, and organic sea moss. If you are vegetarian or vegan, you might consider temporarily changing your diet, desperate times call for desperate measures. Find the purpose in your suffering. Examine again the five potential reasons why spiritual crisis happen. Why do you think you are experiencing a spiritual emergency? Listen to your heart and let the answer emerge. You will know you have found the truth when you feel full body shivers, a sense of peace and clarity, or a sudden light bulb moment. If you can't find any satisfactory explanations mentioned in this video you may like to pray to the universe, God, or whatever to help you find the meaning. Simply communicate your intention, and notice any signs that arise in the next week. Exercise, even just for a few minutes. Depending on your situation, you may like a full body catharsis, like high interval training, or a gentle activity like walking. Pay attention to your needs. Exercise is vital for mental health and general physical well-being. It also connects you with your body and the surrounding world, which is important during the spiritual crisis. Avoid stressful situations and reduce your responsibilities. Stress exacerbates any form of spiritual emergency, this is pretty obvious. Furthermore, holding on to many responsibilities tends to produce stress. If you have many projects or people needing your energy, it might be best to drop the vast majority of them. The spiritual crisis demands your energy and attention, and getting lost in workaholism is a recipe for disaster. So try to simplify what you can and give yourself some breathing space. Seek support. Yes, in the midst of psychosis it might be necessary to be medicated and hospitalized, low doses of medication are generally better than high doses during spiritual emergencies, but I am not a medical professional, so please do your own research. But generally, if your experience doesn't require 24-7 observation, it's best to seek out a therapist or spiritual counselor who is familiar with the notion of spiritual emergencies. Above all, I recommended transpersonal and depth therapists, but please do your research and ask them if they know about spiritual crisis. This is a great option, and you can visit the spiritual crisis or emergence network to see if any are near you. If worse comes to worst and you can't find any within a reasonable distance, you can always try a psychics, community mental health center, or online Skype sessions. You can also check out our Awakening Thy Cosmic Self journal for gentle guidance. It will be available on our community website very soon. Now, why am I not recommending the support of friends or family members? The reasons why is because usually those close to us have no understanding of the spiritual crisis or emergency and tend to be negatively conditioned by medical institutions. In other words, it's much more likely that they will get spooked by your experience, as they are comparing it to the old you, and actually invalidate the experience rather than validate it. This is not a hard and fast rule, and some friends or family members are mature and may have gone through similar experiences. So try to use your gut instinct when making a decision, and above all, put your well-being first. Most importantly, do not let anyone try to convince you that what you're going through is purely a product of mental illness or that your visions or insights are irrelevant. Denying the spiritual element of what you are going through is monumentally short-sighted and detrimental to your well-being. You have the right to honor your experience and find meaning in it, as indeed it is meaningful. To use an analogy, if this experience is like hyperventilating, the idea is to catch your breath. Here are some guidelines on how to cope with dark night of the soul or any form of spiritual crisis. You can handle it. 
Yes, it may seem like nothing makes sense, like there is no ground, like you don't understand what's going on, and so on. You can handle it. You never get more than you can handle. Redefine the experience. Become aware that you are seeing this energetic experience out of fear, or despair, or some sort of negativity. Empower yourself by redefining it. Decide that this is serving you, that it is good, even if it is rough. No one, nor entity, is out to get you if anything, the universe has got your back. So trust your experience, rest as much as you need, take the space you feel you need and begin to relax into this transition knowing something good is taking place and all you have to do is, let it. If you define the experience negatively, you will experience it negatively. This will create resistance within you, which will simply prolong the dark night. Therefore, welcome it, be grateful for it, and you will transition through it as smoothly as possible. Relax the minds need to have everything sorted out. Trust that you will know what you need to know when you need to know it. If you feel guided to a certain person, book or video, follow that. But don't force it. Understand that the context for what is happening is a slipping away of a construct that is not in alignment with your natural self. That is why this is a positive thing. Any and all resistance is resistance within yourself of your natural self. So, allow the natural self to come through. There is a tendency in humanity to automatically define unexpected change as negative. Once again, watch your definitions. Part of understanding spiritual crisis is also trusting that you, in some level of your consciousness, invited this shift. You are not a victim of anything, so don't reinforce that idea. It takes trust and allowing. Courage and awareness. Applying these steps would create an immediate relief. It takes time for everything to realign, so know that's okay. You may be called to information and experiences that are entirely different from what you have previously known, and that is part of the guidance of who you really are, the natural self, guiding you to your new ground, your center. Pay attention to what resonates for you, give it room in your being. Don't judge yourself for being pulled to certain ideas or material that are uncommon or unpopular or what have you. On the contrary, validate yourself. Alongside the receiving of new information, in whatever way shape or form it happens, it could also happen just directly in your consciousness, where you will find yourself communicating with an entity. There are endless paths. There may be actions you feel to take that are about changing direction. This could be quitting a job, a relationship. It could also be finally doing something you have always been afraid to do. Oftentimes in the various crises, persons come into conflict with the dominant worldview, and they begin to feel alienated and isolated. There are some who respond to crisis through excessive worry and others who develop apathy, or complete despair. I have argued that people do not need drugs, rather people need people. It is necessary for there to exist a supportive network to help the person through the crisis so it may reach a transformative ending. It is possible after undergoing such a crisis to emerge with new insights, to develop new meanings, a renewed sense of purpose. But, it is necessary for there to be a journey, a journey in togetherness, where the person can feel safe and supported in conquering fears, to be able to face the intrusive thoughts and feelings of dread that haunt them. In this journey is the process of being able to shed the false self, to actually be able to be a human being with another human being, and to no longer feel that they must repress their feelings or must play the games, or wear the masks that society imposes upon us. To be able to come to a radical authenticity, a mastery of past traumas must be accomplished, where we make the choice to live and be rather than merely react. I hope this video was really helpful to you, see you in the next video. Peace, love and life.